in 1985, I was a 12-year-old kid, and me and my friends wanted to play football, but we didn't have a ball. So we went uh, inside my basement to find one. So uh, after I went inside, there was no light. It was pitch black, and I told my friends to stay outside so I can search for it. When I went inside, it was a complete mess with a lot of rubble. So looking for this ball to play football, I suddenly saw a plastic bag with two tennis rackets and a ball. So I took those two tennis rackets, which my dad bought a couple of years ago, pulled that from the rubble, went outside, and told my friends that today we will play tennis, no football. So everybody laughed. We went behind our building, and uh, we draw an improvised tennis court where we would play for the first time tennis. And after trying that, everybody liked it, and uh, more kids started to show interest in that. Soon after a couple of weeks, more kids started to show interest, and we organized first-time tournaments more kids started to buy tennis rackets, and uh, like this, the first tennis started to exist. I never thought that after I pulled those two tennis rackets, something big will uh, happen. A year after, I went to Zagreb, Croatia, to, to uh, uh, see how the proper tennis lessons are being conducted. I saw how the tennis, professional tennis is being played. So after a year after I came back, I was still a junior, but I decided to form a tennis uh, school. So I took all those kids that we started playing tennis and started to show them the first movements of tennis. And uh, in two years after that, me and my dad, who he is uh, one of the main players in Tennis Pristina, decided to open a first uh, proper tennis club in Kosovo. So its, its name is Tennis Club Pristina. And uh, from that on, uh, we went in different parts of Kosovo to see how uh, tennis interest is going on. So we uh, saw so many people that wanted to do tennis and we encouraged them to open tennis clubs. So in, two, in 1996, we opened a tennis federation of Kosovo. So I never thought that after finding those two rackets, uh, we can end up with the forming of tennis federation of Kosovo. Now, Tennis Federation Kosovo has 11 clubs, around 5,000 players, and I currently work as a tennis teacher in the Tennis Club Pristina, teaching around 300 players during the, uh, the year. Uh, this is how Tennis Nieri started to uh, occur. What is Nieri? Uh, Nieri means, for me, as a dude. So I consider myself sort of dude in a positive way, so I can spread positive... Uh, waves in the communities I form. So after this tennis, I did some DJing because that was my dream, so I became a DJ. So I wanted to call myself DJ Nieri. <laughs> so uh, I organized parties, and my main goal in becoming a DJ was to uh, put techno music mainstream, because that time, techno was not a mainstream, and uh, uh, I was uh, very happy after it went uh, as a main uh, music in Kosovo's uh, youths. Then, after a couple of years, I uh, formed Snonieri. It's the other organization that has to do with promotion of ski and snowboard culture in uh, Kosovo and the region. Beginning uh, was only informing people about the state of the ski slopes and the snow. And then afterwards, we started promoting it by organizing events and also uh, installing the first snow park in Brzovica, that is in Kosovo. A year after, uh, I took an initiative to uh, organize first trips, uh, hiking trips in Kosovo. So I come to, came to an idea to uh, form a group that was uh, named Hiking Nieri. So the Hiking Nieri had to do with uh, organizing hiking trips every week, uh, making Kosovo's nature very popular through my photos and videos, and that would happen in 2009. So our main goal is to mark all the trails in Kosovo in coming years. And the latest uh, organization is uh, Skate Nieri. Skate Nieri has to do about uniting all the skate, skateboarders in Kosovo. Uh, we formed the first group Skate Nieri in 2010, and that's the first uh, ever skate group to be formed and uh, officially uh, uh, registered as an NGO. Uh, this is the, just a brief review about 
how many things I do in my life and how I keep myself busy. But before we go to the main point, I just wanted to uh, come back again to this DJ thing in 1999. I was all the time during the war in my apartment. So I was dreaming the day when Kosovo will be freed and uh, the good days will come again back. And then uh, after the freedom came in uh, June 99, uh, my family decided, as most of the families in Kosovo, uh, wanted to uh, tidy up the, the apartment and paint. So as I was doing the painting of my room, uh, I saw the live coverage of uh, Love Parade 99, uh, which was held in Berlin. It was on Viva TV, uh, linked through my satellite dish. So I came to the idea, why not organizing one uh, Love Parade? Love Parade, maybe you know, it's about trucks and uh, music in a big area of uh, place like in Berlin. So I went uh, and told my friends about this idea and they liked it. So the first step was to find trucks. So I went to find trucks and the organization named International Rescue Committee uh, liked the idea and I uh, wanted 12 trucks, they gave me. I wanted generators, they gave me the manpower, okay? So the next step after that was me to find sponsors, uh, MCs, sound system, and other things. So in a month and a half, in 4th of uh, September 1999, uh, 12 trucks loaded with people started moving in Pristina. They were... Uh, putting music, techno music, and the uh, atmosphere was perfect. So after a second lab that we did around Pristina, there were uh, around 40,000 people attending this love parade. So then I came to the idea that anything can, be happen anything can happen if you are determined to do it. Uh, I just wanted to recap this. Uh, my profession, my real profession is a dentist. Uh, I, I'm not joking, I'm a dentist, I work as a dentist, but this didn't stop me from doing uh, all these uh, activities. Uh, to pursue my passion to do uh, music and uh, all, all other activities. Um, most importantly, all these activities are about happiness, uh, making large communities of people happy with no strings attached. Uh, what I learned from these activities is that uh, uh, once you, you want to do it and you're determined, it will happen and it will create large uh, communities with people thinking as you. So I, I will come back again to 1985. Uh, I, I see this date as a very, a very important because after I pulled those two tennis rackets, a tennis federation was formed with 5,000 players. So I would like you to give this to think about yourself. Keep your eyes and minds open. Because once you go somewhere and look for the tennis ball and you find tennis rackets, then just ask yourself, why not? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>